is October the 3rd, and I am clearly in my office getting ready for another <laughs> work week. Um, usually when I first get in in the morning, I kind of get myself oriented to what I want to work on and want to do. Um, I've done my reading for my book group today. I was watching a couple of videos about geology. Um, and not that I'm teaching geology this semester, but it's still related to things that I like to talk about. Um, but I thought I would show you a couple of things since I didn't have my socks yesterday. Um, this is my socks for the Halloween sock along. So I thought this was a good bag to put them in. This is one of Charlotte from April 9 Designs bags. And it is made in such a way that it's got a double zipper and that you can draw your yarn out from the center. Um, I am knitting the... Let's see, make sure I get the name right here. These are a little bit, a little hocus pocus by This Handmade Life. Uh, this is a free pattern. They have several free sock patterns. Um, I have knitted some of their stuff when I first started knitting socks. They were one of the first pair that I ever knitted. But this has got a little cable feature, if you can see there on it. And then Shirley gave me this cotton yarn. Now. I know I could knit just out of one ball, but because I'm doing two at a time, I decided that I would um, use both of them and then I'll make another pair if I want to, or I'll pass it on to somebody that will. But this is um, a cotton blend. I've never knitted a pair of cotton blend socks before. So this is Sakina cotton blend. It's got some um, stretch stuff in it too, so it's not just straight cotton. But anyway, so this is where I'm at. I have done my toe increases. I did not worry about being matchy-matchy, obviously. And I just started the little cable detail. All right. Um, I thought it would be interesting to point this out. As a left-handed knitter and a toe-up knitter, I'm actually knitting this chart exactly opposite <laughs> to what somebody who was right-handed and knitting top-down would do. So if you were knitting, and this is a free pattern, so I'm not going to worry about showing you the chart too much. Um, if I, if I were a right-handed knitter, I would have to read this chart, the direction my needles move through the yarn, which is right to left, okay? But because I'm a left-handed knitter, my needles move through the yarn left to right, so I read my charts left to right. Then, because I'm a toe-up knitter, I'm going to read this chart from the top down. Now, here it doesn't really matter because it's a symmetrical chart, but just for purposes of, of this conversation, um, top-down knitters start at the bottom of the chart and read up, and I'm going to start at the top of the chart and go down. But, it, like I said, it's a symmetric pattern, so it doesn't really matter. Nobody knows exactly which way the cables are supposed to twist anyway, so who cares? Uh, but anyway, so there's there's just this little cable detail that's there on these. I did not do a contrast toe like this one has, and I don't know if I'll do a contrast heel or not. I will do an afterthought heel. But um, anyway, so these are the ones I'm knitting for Kirsty's Halloween sock along. And I've got my little Halloween donut there from Charmed and Dangerous. This was actually a gift from Maria out in Colorado. Um, but my little Halloween donut. So those are my uh, sock along, my Halloween sock along socks. And I thought I wanted to share those with you. The other thing that I brought with me in my knitting for work, this is a um, Republica Unicornia bag. Um, they are out of Georgia. I bought this a long time ago, but I, it's got rainbow narwhals on it. Or no, is this it right? Is that right? That's who did this bag? No, I think that's wrong. Um, but anyway, I don't remember. There's no tag on it. It may be a Molly Klein Designs bag. I don't remember. Anyway, it, it has rainbow, rainbow narwhals on it is the main thing that you need to get out of this. Um, I, had, I had an impulse purchase one day. I know, surprise, surprise. Um, I was walking by somewhere in, in Walmart, I think, and I saw this cake of mandala yarn. And for whatever reason, these colors made me just feel really happy. And it was sitting in an odd place. It wasn't with the rest of the yarn. So I just picked it up, um, thinking that I would knit something out of it. And then I was like, well, what are you going to make? Because that, that mandala yarn doesn't lend itself to everything. But I found this free pattern on the Cascade Yarns website, okay? And it's a, meant to be for a one skein, a one ball, a shawl ball, or whatever you want to call it. Uh, this is the Galaxy Lemonade Shawl. And so, if 
thought, why not? Um, anyway, so, yeah. So, that's my two uh, projects that I brought with me to work on. I just have gotten started on this as well. Um, I am just done the first garter section, and I'm getting ready to start the first lace section, which is just a bunch of yarn overs and knit two together. But it'll be great for meeting knitting or um, before class knitting or whatnot. You know, just has a, I like to have something, it's a t something to talk with my students about. But anyway, so here we are. Yay. <laughs> Also, um, men's knitting retreats. Oh, yes. And there's all kinds of retreats, and you can buy project bags, and you can buy little cute progress keepers like my little Halloween donut here. <laughs> <laughs> you can spend. So I just got done with the faculty uh, knitting group. It's kind of loud. I just walked past some uh, HBAC units. But uh, the new library director has organized he's been a lifelong knitter and he has a men's knitting group that he's organized so um he um organized a faculty meetup for any craft we had crocheters we had cross stitchers we had knitters so it should be really awesome to have a place to go every monday at noon to work on stuff so i think i'm going to start bringing my color work bear sweater since we're the uca bears and work on that during the faculty meetup that'll be fun okay so i thought i'd share a couple more cards before my meeting at three I've got about 20 minutes until my next meeting mm -hmm. so uh the, today's one of today's cards is strength no wisdom the high priestess card wisdom and it's the goddess Sarasvate and Sarasvate is a Hindu goddess of knowledge it is the divinely feminine embodiment of wisdom especially honored by scholars and musicians Sarasvate is credited in India with creating the fruits of civilization the first alphabet, the arts, mathematics, and music. Sarah Svate is easily recognizable by her dazzling white skin and brilliant clothing. This brightness represents her powerful, pure light of wisdom that destroys the darkness of ignorance. Lord knows we need that. Her forearms symbolize how her influence extends over the four directions of the earth and by extension, all areas of life. The book she holds in one of her hands represents education. The beads she holds in another hand indicate spiritual knowledge in her other two hands, she holds a vena, an Indian lute, representing the art of music, which can inspire thoughts of beauty. The appearance of the wisdom card offers a new phase of life from which much knowledge will be gained in a graceful manner. You may also be experiencing a growing interest in spiritual matters. This card suggests the discovery of new soulful depths within yourself or the meeting of a teacher who can help you access that part of yourself. Okay. Then the next card is... Est Sanathlahi, and it is a traditional card for Est Sanathlahi, is the Empress, or fertility. Um, associated with fertility, this benevolent Navajo corn goddess symbolizes the ever-changing, ever-fertile earth. Like the earth itself, Est Sanathlahi appears as a young maiden during the spring and summer months. As the wheel of the year changes to fall and winter, she also takes on the features of a crone. Then she also changes to take on the features of a crone. For this reason, the goddess is also called Changing Woman. Esthanathahi is honored as a creator of the Blessing Way, a series of Navajo rituals. The ceremonies which make up the Blessing Way are used for weddings, childbirth rites, and other joyous occasions in the life of the Navajo. This card suggests you may be experiencing feelings of abundance and fertility, as well as renewed interest in sensuality. Your creativity may be manifesting itself in physical products, children, artistic endeavors, or wealth. If you're feeling a lack of these things, perhaps even a sense of deprivation, it is time to ask yourself where your life needs to be, needs fertilizing. Working through the manure of the past can help grow a more fruit, fruitful future. Boy, that's a that's the for sure truth. Working through the manure of the past. Anyway, so there's a couple of cards for us. Look, I've got swallowtail larva on my Woo, how exciting. They're a larval plant for swallowtails. I think these are giant swallowtails. I'll have to look them up. So, yep, these are giant swallowtails. There's one there and there's one down there. And they'll form cocoons soon and probably stay in their cocoons over the winter. So they hopefully will form them someplace safe so the birds won't grab them up. But yeah, rue is a larval plant. So I was hoping I would get some caterpillars when I planted it and I sure enough did, yay. Lots of butterflies on the Jerusalem artichokes, sometimes called sunchokes. 
There's a couple of different kinds of yellows. There's a variegated fertility. There's some skippers flying around. They're just kind of everywhere, all over them. The sun chokes bloom this time of year, so they're very popular with the butterflies. Here's some peppers. These are jalapenos, and then there's some of those peach peppers and some shisito peppers. These are Anaheims, but then under that are the hot boys, hot, 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 some Carolina Reapers and some Trinidad scorpion peppers. So these, I think I'm going to make chili rellenos, but with these other ones, I think I'm going to pickle them. Good morning. It is Tuesday, October 4th and I'm on campus uh, for a couple of things. First of all, I need to do some grading. I've got an exam I need to grade and some quizzes. And second of all, today is the open house of the Lavender Library here on campus. It was an initiative that was put together by some of the resident directors and some of the um, inclusive clubs on campus. And it is uh, primarily meant to be an inclusive and safe space for the LGBT plus community, but also it is inclusive for anyone and safe um, for people who are in, in these intentionally ignored communities. Um, I don't like to say underrepresented, but intentionally ignored is, is I think I got that from Michelle uh, from Bendy Stitchy podcast, which, you know, she's right. They are intentionally ignored. Um, but at any rate, it is a lending library. It is a place where people can go get information about health issues. Uh, it's just meant to be like an overall safe and inclusive place for people to have a little bit of solace here on campus. So I wanted to go show my support for that. I'm wearing my Allies in STEM shirt, which turns out one of my students in my class designed. Um, and I'm going to go over and go to the open house for that today, too. So that's kind of what the plan is for today. We'll see how it works out. Oh boy, here's another one. I'm gonna catch him and put him outside. Gecko rescue again today. So we'll <laughs> take him out to the greenhouse area. pre-order for a while. It's called Hagitude, Reimagining the Second Half of Life, and I've been listening to some of her podcasts, and it specifically looks at women who are going through menopause or who are post-menopausal, uh, and how in the past society has kind of said, oh, your life is over, your life is over, and how we're recapturing and reclaiming uh, that part of our lives as sort of a new springtime, as sort of a new uh, beginning or a new way to look at our reimagining who we are. She talks about the hag and the hag figure in, in stories very often is the one who has the power. So I like that. So I'm looking forward to digging into this. So I'm going to sign this couple of days off and I'll see you in a couple of days. Mm -hmm. 